Hello everyone and welcome to chapel. Um, today I wanted to start off with a verse from Revelation 4, 11 that says, Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things. By your will they existed and were created. So let's sing of how worthy our God is and please sing with us.
wanted to um, come and share with y'all quickly this morning just about a few takeaways that we had from Passion this year. And if you don't know what Passion is, it's a big conference in Atlanta where people gather. It was 55,000 people this year at Mercedes-Benz just to praise the Lord and hear messages from the Word. And so I, we just wanted to come and share a couple quick takeaways. And so... This morning, I wanted to talk about a message from a guy named Louis Giglio. Uh, a lot of you might have heard of him before, but he's like in charge of all of passion and he's a founder of it. And so um, something that he brought to our attention during this time was just that in comparison to so many of the things that we go through, what Jesus did for us is so much bigger. He paid it all on the cross and I think we are so like stressed out or so confused so many times in this world and we forget what Jesus did for us and so during his message he brought up this 80 foot cross in the middle of the whole stadium and it was just a great reminder he stood next to it and was just like in comparison to this cross like he was nothing and so I think that is just a great reminder that what Jesus did for us is just so, so big in comparison to anything that we may be struggling with or going through today. And um, I think that was just like one of my biggest takeaways. But also, he read a, passion, a passage from Ephesians, which it's from Ephesians 2, 3 through 6. And it says, all of us also lived among them at once, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace that you have been saved, and God raised us up with Christ and seated with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. And so I think that was just a great reminder because he talked about how like before Jesus, before what Christ did for us, we were nothing and we were dead and we were made alive in Jesus. And so whatever we think in this world that we deserve or that we should have, we really don't because we don't deserve anything, but what Jesus did for us made us alive. And so that is our purpose here on this earth. And I think we can lose sight of that because of all the little things day to day. But um, I just think that was a great message overall that just really all that we do and all that we say and um, anything that we have in this world is because of Jesus and because he made us alive. 
And so that was something that I took away, but Brookie. Yeah. So um, one of the speakers that really stuck out to me was Ben Stewart. Um, he talked about, um, he was in Mark 4 talking about the parables and stuff. And he pointed out that like, if you want to know, like if you want to be transformed, you have to like know the real Jesus. Um, but it's hard because sometimes Jesus can be super, super confusing. Like you read stuff and it just doesn't make sense. Um, but um, he used the example of the parable of the sower and then how the disciples after that had um, come up to him and like asked him like what his purpose was, like what his meaning was. And so this is Mark 4, 10 through 12. Um, and when he was alone, those around him with the 12 asked him about the parables. And he said to them, to you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God, but for those outside, everything's in parables so that they may indeed see but not perceive and they may, and they may indeed hear but not understand lest they should turn and be forgiven. And so um, Ben pointed out that the difference between the disciples and the people that were like on the outside that just came to hear Jesus, like the difference was um, the disciples like asked Jesus like what his meaning was. And so their hearts were humble and hungry for um, what God was trying to say to them. And so he talked, Ben talked on the first night of passion. So it was super like, um, it was a good message to hear on the first night because like we would hear so many speakers the next day. And like, if we didn't have a receptive heart that was going to listen to what they were going to say, like the best that they could say about us is we were like in proximity to people that were transformed and not the ones actually being transformed. Um, and so, yeah, it was important. Um, that, like we're going to read this and like stuff is just not going to make sense. But we um, just have to go to God because this can change your life. And if you're not like really trying to dive into it and like understand what God's trying to say, like you won't be transformed. So, yeah. Yeah, like Kate and Brooke said, passion was just like, the most amazing experience and we can come up and like talk about it but really words can't describe it you just have to be there and so like I would just encourage all of you like whether on a class trip or like just with friends like go to passion because like it will really change your life um so one of my favorite speakers was JP and uh Jonathan Pakluda, I think but he just goes by JP um but he's actually the pastor at Harris Creek Church in Waco which is kind of cool he's pretty close um but he talked about how Jesus is the way the truth and the life so um John 10 says I am the gate whoever enters enters through me will be saved and so he kind of asked the question like is Jesus the only way and I feel like that's a question that we kind of all know the answer to in the back of our heads. Like, we know that Jesus is the only way to heaven. But he kind of talked about how sometimes we don't really act like it because we're around people all the time who don't know Jesus. And if you don't know Jesus, like, you don't get to spend eternity with him. Um, and that's the truth. And he kind of talked about how we live in a really tolerant generation who sometimes doesn't want to speak the truth out of fear of offending people or just because that may be their truth and this is our truth. But really... There is absolute truth, like no matter what we feel like, truth is truth, and Jesus is the truth, and that's what we're told in Scripture. And um, he kind of talked about how things are loving when they're true. And so you could tell someone a lie, and it may sound really good, but if it's not true, then it's not really loving them because it's not going to lead them like to the Lord. Um, and something can be true even if it doesn't feel right. And so I feel like that's something a lot of our like generation kind of struggles with is if something doesn't make us happy or like doesn't feel right, then it, we don't follow it as the truth. But like we're told in scripture so many times that Jesus and following him is going to come with like pain and suffering. And it's not always going to feel like the best option, but because it's the truth, it really is. Um, and he just kind of talked about that there's a difference between the truth journey and the happiness journey, and that as believers, we're called to live the truth journey, even if it doesn't always make us happy, which I thought was really impactful. But one of the things he said that kind of stood out to me the most was that we were meant to live in right relationship with God. And if we try and separate ourselves from that, like a fish out of water, we're not going to be able to thrive and really, the life spent with Jesus is, like, the best thing you can do. And apart from him, life is really worth nothing um, because life is found in no other person or no other place or no other thing than Jesus. Um, and then he kind of said, if we believe that, like, how could we not go out and share it? Like, it's such good news, and everyone deserves to hear it, and there's so many people who don't. So, like, if we really believe that he's the truth, then we should, like, not hold back and not— um, kind of like shy away out of fear because it's the truth and it's loving so we should go and tell everyone and so that was just really encouraging to me but we actually have a video clip um, from JP's message it's about 10 minutes um, and he used a lot of really cool demonstrations and illustrations in his message and so you'll get to see those in here but yeah I hope you all enjoy the video and then the band's gonna close us when it's over so yeah <laughs> 
And also, I would just like encourage y'all to go um, to the Passion website and go watch these videos of the speakers because there were so many great things and so much wisdom in all of the t different talks. And whatever you may, may be struggling with, like there's definitely something that will stick out to you. And I hope something stuck out to you today. But um, I hope y'all enjoy our video clip. My daughter, who's here, and I, this past year, went to Zambia, uh, a country in Africa, on a mission trip. We were serving with the ministry there, and while we were there, she got really sick. Uh, she caught some bug, and she had to stay in bed, was running a high fever. And I was nervous that we weren't going to get home, because I'm like, how are we going to get her on a plane? And we had to stop in Qatar. Uh, and if you don't know about the country of Qatar, or Qatar, it's a really small country surrounded by Iran. Iraq, Saudi Arabia, Afghanistan, and it's a giant airport. And we're in that airport, and I'm trying to figure out which gate's going to take us home. And she's there, and she's sick, and I'm like, okay, we've got to get her on a plane and, and, and figure this thing out. And so I'm walking around, and I'm like, I don't know if it's this way, this way, this way, and I'm trying to find someone who speaks English. And I'm, I can't find anyone to help us. And all of a sudden, the stress of the situation is overwhelming me. I'm like, we got to get home. And if you see me in that moment, hypothetically speaking, and you come up and say, like, what's up, JP, man? How you doing? Hey, what's, what's wrong? You seem stressed. And I'm like, I don't know which gate's going to take us home. I've got to get her home to her sister and her brother and her mom. Like, we got to get home. She's sick. And you're like, hey, bro, got good news for you any of these gates will take you home, any of them. You just get on a plane, it's going to go to your, your place. I, I'm going to be like, oh, wow, thank you so much. Like, say I believed you, you know. Oh my goodness, that's such great news, that's so kind, that's so loving, I'm so excited. And we get on a plane and it drops us off, you know, in uh, Ukraine or, or some war-torn area or some, some place where, where she's not welcomed. And the reality of what you said to me setting in that it wasn't loving because it wasn't true. And likewise, if in an effort to help me, you say, hey, where are you going? You're going to DFW there in Texas? Oh, it's gate D16. I'm not going to be like, D16? Say, man, what you talking about D16? Don't be coming at me with this closed-minded, one-way, narrow path, like only D. I don't, I don't just need to get on D16 if I don't want to. I'll get on any plane. Like, why, why are you coming at me like D16? I might get on A15. I might get on E27, and you're going to be like, bro, you can go to whatever gate you want, but if you want to get home, it's D16, right? And, and that's loving. Why, why is it loving? Why is it loving? Because it's true. Because it's true. So what does it mean? What does it mean that Jesus says he's the way, that he's the only way to heaven? Write that down. Jesus is the only way to heaven. And that's loving because it's true. So what does it mean that Jesus is the truth? He says, I'm the, I'm the truth. We know that Jesus is historically true. There's really not a credible atheist in our day that would say, no, Jesus Christ never existed. Uh, there, there's lots of evidence to support the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. But he's not saying I'm true, he's saying I'm the truth, which is a little bit different. Something can be true even if no one believes it. Something can be true if no one practices it. Some, something can be true if no one puts their life behind it. And something can be true even if it doesn't feel right. I think that's what's happening today is a lot of your peers are like, I don't know, that just doesn't feel right to me. And, and so it can't be true because it doesn't feel right. Can we, can we do something together real quick? I want you to take out a, uh, this is unanimous if all of you can do this, take out a good pointer finger. Good pointer finger. Okay, you got it. I see you. Thank you guys. Good pointer finger. Nobody's too cool for this. Everybody's like, oh yeah, I'm going to do the exercise. Thank you. 
Okay, you got your pointer finger. This is the hard part. You got to trust me a little bit. I'm going to watch your purses because not everybody here is a Christian. I I want you to close your eyes. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Okay, I'm looking. Close your eyes. All I want you to do now with your eyes closed is point north. Just point north. Just point north. Eyes closed. Point north. Point north. Stop thinking about it. Point north. Okay, now open your eyes. Wow. Wow. I mean, that worked way better than I thought it would. Some of you are pointing straight up. Uh, Texas A&M, we're glad you're here. Uh, It's that way. It's that way. Hey, hey, listen, come back with me for a second, okay? I don't care how strongly you felt it was this way. This way, this way, this way, this way. It wasn't. That way is north, right? And some of you are like, I got it. I pointed that way. It's a really narrow line that if you walk, you're going to split right through Michigan and keep going. You're going to go through Ontario, Canada. But if you're just a few degrees to the right or the left, you're going to miss Canada altogether. There's one way that's north, regardless of what you feel, and that's the truth. And no matter what you believe, no matter what, you can't change that. That's the reality. Jesus says, I am the truth. And so many of you are not on a truth journey, you're on a happiness journey. You don't care. Like you would say, I'll believe a lie if it will make me happy. And what if the truth doesn't make me happy? What if the truth means I can't do whatever I want to do when I want to do? I can't date whoever I want to date. I can't vape whenever I want to vape. I can't look at whatever I want to look. What if the truth compromises my deepest desires? It's still the truth. It's still the truth. Like your truth, because you grew up in the my truth, your truth, our truth generation. Your truth might be that you can fly, like you're like, I I believe it. I've got crystals, I've manifested it, I am 100% on this whole flying thing. And you climb to the tallest building and you jump off. Uh, Another truth, a greater truth, an absolute truth of gravity is going to overwhelm your little T truth and it's going to pull you to the earth at 200 miles per hour and you're going to hit the ground and your bones are going to shatter and you're not going to make it. And the most loving thing that I could have said to you before you jumped off is, no, your truth is a lie. You're believing a lie, and it's going to cost you. And because I love you and care about you, I don't want you to face that. And the truth is that we were created by Jesus. And for Jesus, Colossians 1 says, for in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. It's a continuation of what Carrie read to us earlier. It means that your atheist friend was made by Jesus and for Jesus. And, And they think, no, 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 I'm just trying to find freedom. I want the freedom to do whatever I want to do when I want to do it. That's my truth. Well, the Scripture says in John 8, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. You got to understand there's absolute truths you have no problem with. What happens if you don't eat? You lose weight. But what happens if you keep not eating? You'll starve to death. And no one is like, wait, man, that's not fair. I'm going to prove them wrong. I'm just going to go with that. What happens if you don't breathe? You asphyxiate, right? You you die. And nobody's like, no, I'm going to show you. I'll just go without breath. I, I, I don't like that God made me to need breath, so I'm going without it. You're not going to win. That's not going to go well for you. And so what happens if you don't have Jesus? You don't have a way to God. 
You don't have a way to paradise. Thank you to the um, to the young ladies that came and gave their testimony, but what they heard it passionate. 
Um, so I was one of the few that I actually went to the very first passionate that ever happened, and um, it wasn't as big. I think it was, I believe it was in Dallas, and, uh, and it was really impactful um, because there were actually a lot of people there that I, I know probably didn't know Christ, but, there, but I would say the majority of the people that left knew Christ uh, in a very powerful way. Um, and, and just real quick, just uh, one of the things that, that he was trying to get across in his message was talking about speaking, speaking truth and love. And, and sometimes love doesn't always feel lovey. It doesn't feel like a Valentine's card. It doesn't feel like something that you're just going to uh, walk away with and just be happy. Sometimes uh, love um, comes at us uh, pretty harsh. And uh, just my very best friend that I grew up with from the time we were in kindergarten, we still talk to each other probably twice a week, um, and we offer advice to one another. And sometimes the advice uh, ends up with one of us hanging the phone up on each other. Um, but then we end up calling each other back, and we're like, you know, I'm sorry I was that way, because, uh, because I'm not going to tell him something that that I wouldn't want to hear myself that was actually going to help me. Um, I, in other words, I, I don't want someone speaking into me something that is not true and it leads me down a path of destruction. Um, you know, it, it says in Ephesians 4 that we're supposed to speak truth and love and so that's something I just want y'all to carry with y'all. Um, just in, in all decisions, everything that you do, uh, and especially with dealing with friends and with speaking what is, tr what is actually true versus what the world wants to um, have this truth. So I'm going to pray real quick and then we're going to be dismissed. Uh, dearly Father, Lord, we just thank you, God, for this day. Um, Lord, I thank you that there is absolute truth. Lord, you are the way, you are the truth, and you are the light, God. And there is, there is no one else and there's nothing else, God, that, um, that exudes what, what real truth is. Lord, I just pray that, that our students would have the the strength, God, I pray that they would have the courage to uh, speak truth and love, uh, not even just to their friends, but to, to anyone that they may encounter, God. And, and for anybody here that's, that's, uh, that has doubt in their mind, anybody here that's been hurt, Lord, by maybe someone else who claims to be a lover of Christ, Lord, I just pray for them that you would just take that shroud of bitterness away from them, God, and realize that, and, and help them realize that, that is that is just Satan, and that it is nothing good, Lord, and that you want that away from them. And I pray that that gets taken away from them, so that they can experience, God, who you are, your love, and your truth, God. And uh, be with us throughout the rest of this day. Um, let us do everything as unto you, God. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.